Yeah, I'm the last speaker standing between you and lunch, so I'll try to be quick. <laughs> so I'm Sudipta Sengupta from Amazon AWS. I lead new initiatives across database analytics and ML, uh, bringing together new products and services that span hardware, distributed systems, data, and machine learning. Uh, today, I'll talk about how we are innovating with XLA for the neuron compiler for AWS Trainium and Inferentia. The work that has been contributed back to open source is joined between the Neuron team at AWS, uh, the Google XLA team, and the MetaPyTorch team. And members from all three teams are present in the audience today. So at AWS, we leverage our deep understanding of workloads running in the largest public cloud, as well as Amazon internal services, such as Alexa ads and retail on amazon.com uh, to build the best systems from the ground up. We innovate across the stack for machine learning acceleration from chips to servers, to data centers, to managed services. We have a very broad and deep ML computing portfolio that spans CPUs, GPUs, custom ASICs, and FPGS. And the focus of this talk today is our own ML Silicon ASIC for deep learning training and inference, uh, which is Trainium and Inferentia. These chips are the basis of our purpose-built instances uh, for training and inference. So AWS Trainium is optimized for training, and it's in its first generation. AWS Inferentia is in its uh, second generation. It's optimized for inference. And AWS Neuron SDK uh, is the software stack that powers all these instances and seamlessly integrates with popular ML frameworks such as PyTorch, TensorFlow, and JAX. Now, as you all know, it is not just about the chips and instances, but a data center scale systems for training today's largest generative models across tens of thousands of accelerators. So the network is super important because these accelerators are interconnected in AWS over a petabit scale high bandwidth network in what we call ultra clusters. Here is a schematic diagram of the Trainium microarchitecture. Uh, the overall schematic may be familiar to many of you. The core of the chip is the systolic array for matrix multiplication. It requires high memory bandwidth to sustain the peak flops in the MATML array. It also requires compiler support to break down big MATMLs into smaller sizes that a single systolic array can handle. The systolic array is fed by a scratch pad memory, uh, which is used to cache data from high bandwidth memory. And this on-chip cache is organized as multiple partitions to further improve access bandwidth. Again, you require compiler support to manage data movement between the HBM and the scratch pad and between scratch pad partitions. So the important thing here to note is it is not just about the arithmetic compute, which is relatively easy, but more importantly uh, about exploiting the memory hierarchy, how to minimize data movement, and how to uh, utilize the computation structure to overlap compute and communication as much as possible. So it's a tall order for the compiler uh, to hide the details of the microarchitecture and provide easy programmability, usability, and performance to the ML scientist. And that's the challenge we want to address here. This is a diagram showing how the neuron SDK is present in different parts of the end-to-end -end ML flow. Uh, so the paths are marked in purple here. Uh, so you can see the framework adaptation layer which is glue code uh, beneath the framework to talk to other parts of Neuron. The Neuron compiler supports both ahead of time compilation 
and just-in-time compilation modes. The neuron runtime is supporting model execution for both training and inference. And the neuron dev tools are outside the framework and provide increased visibility into the hardware for debugging, profiling, and performance monitoring. Years back, we made an early decision to choose XLA as the front-end IR for Neuron. And why was that? So the most important reason is it's the common compiler IR across PyTorch, TensorFlow, and JAX. And this was years back when JAX was in its early days, but we still recognize the opportunity to have XLA as a common denominator beneath all these three popular frameworks. Uh, because uh, of uh, the ubiquity of XLA, these frameworks have mature loading to XLA, which continues to improve and expand over time. All of you know that it's a challenge to handle thousands of operators in any framework. Uh, so XLA was born with TensorFlow. Uh, then it came to PyTorch via la lazy graph evaluation with CPU fallback, and then it's also the default backend in JAX. Uh, it's easily extensible with new primitive ops, compute descriptions for new framework level operators, and super important custom ops, uh, because ML scientists and compiler developers always want to do something on their own beyond what is available ready-made in the frameworks. And finally, we love the velocity and engagement with the open source community. And we have had a blast working with Google, Meta, and others in the community, uh, in the ways uh, XLA uses Neuron and to enhance it and contribute back to the community. A quick primer on how Neuron compiler uses XLA. So it takes an HLO protobuf from the framework. And there are two layers of transformations in the front end here, shown in yellow and purple. The yellow layer is the HLO transformations. Uh, they reuse existing canonicalization and simplification optimizations already present in the open stack. You know, things like uh, common sub-expression elimination, that code elimination, a constant folding, algebraic simplification, call graph flattening, and so on. And to that, we add our own custom optimizations for our own hardware. Uh, these include you know, graph partitioning, EDM recognition, lowering to custom ops, and so on. The layer below that, while entering the purple block here, we translate to the MLIR-based MHLO dialect, and there we have some hardware-specific transformations, such as rematerialization to save memory footprint, you know, collective communication, op coalescing, and graph-level scheduling. And below that, it enters a neuron-specific IR layer. Now, I want to quickly showcase a few mature projects that have been contributed back to the community. Uh, jointly with our partners at Meta and Google. And all these have been driven by uh, customer needs on AWS for ML workloads. The first one is XLA backend for Torched or Distributed. So uh, you all know that PyTorch was built for CPU and GPU first, and GPUs are ubiquitous, right? And uh, things run in, in the CPU and GPU world uh, in a, a operator kernel library mode, right? But there is this new world of compiled mode for Trainium, for TPU, and other accelerators, where it, it's a departure uh, uh, from how things work on GPU and CPU, and we want to make it easy for existing code written for GPU uh, to port to this new generation of accelerators, right? As big, and for that, Code portability is super important. So we had feedback from our customers uh, that they had to change the torched or distributed calls in existing GPU code to torch XLA distributed. And this is because at that time, torched or distributed only had a few 
backends like Glue, MPI, and Nickel, and XLA was not one of them. So we worked uh, to add XLA as a backend for Torch.Distributed. And the idea is very simple, shown in uh, on the right here. Uh, you just translate from the Torch.Distributed calls to Torch XLA distributed calls. And once you enter Torch XLA land, you can have the lazy graph evaluation and have the graph recorded using the XLA collective communication ops. Uh, but the ML scientist user for the framework does not see all of this and they can continue to use the torched or distributed calls. And in the process, we also figured out opportunities to add this primitive collective communication ops to XLA itself, uh, like all gather and reduce scatter for deep speed or fully sharded data parallel and send and receive for pipeline parallelism. And the reason that the need arose is some of the uh, in early implementations of X XLA because uh, the early targets had underneath optimization that did not require some of these ops. The need was not felt, but then you want to port it to GPU and Trainium, you need this primitive ops to pass down to uh, the respective uh, library for the new hardware targets. The last example here is enabling eager execution in PyTorch XLA. And many of you will appreciate this coming from the GPU world and running PyTorch in eager mode, right? Uh, so you can you love stepping through the code and debugging and examining tensors and so on. But the problem is PyTorch XLA uh, does lady evaluation. So it's pretending it's evaluating. Actually, it's not, right? So it's just building the graph. Uh, so here is an example code. Uh, there are four linear layers, and then um, you're printing the output. So this is the graph you will get at the A10 operator level, right? Input, four linear operators, and the output. So if you did not have the print apps, or the uh, you want, to, or you didn't have the code there to inspect in the debugger, you would not see the output until you called mark step and the actual gra graph executes, compiles and executes on the accelerator. Now, if you want to inspect intermediate tensors, you force immediate evaluation, right? And that has its own consequences. It fragments the graph. It incurs additional compilation of smaller subgraphs. And between training steps, you may change your breakpoints or your locations for inspecting intermediate variables. So then uh, new subgraphs will be compiled and they will not hit the compilation cache anymore, right? So that's a problem. It's a, it's a departure from what you are used to on GPU. So what we did here to address the problem, uh, so the problem is here. So corresponding to this code, you see the, the PDB uh, annotation there to inspect out one and out two. So that is for so eager execution. So effectively, you are having two subgraphs compiled, right? Now, what if I changed my uh, inspection to the intermediate variable after linear three? It would now split into a three layer and a one layer graph and trigger recompilation again. It will not hit the XLA compilation cache. So we have a simple solution here. We essentially break the graph and compile at the A10 level operator. So here, those three red lines, dotted lines, are the boundaries of subgraph compilation. And there's an easy way to figure that out. You essentially materialize the output tensor when Torch XLA records output of each A10 level operator. So once the graph is decomposed in this manner, you can see it is now coming very close to the per-op kernel world of regular Python GPU because each subgraph corresponds to one A10 level operator and you compiled it. Uh, and so because these are simple operators, you can compile much faster. So your debugging becomes more responsive. And also if you change the breakpoint or inspection location in future training steps, there is no recompilation because the graphs are just uh, serially composed uh, to give you the end result. So of course, <clears throat> This has trade off with execution time, but when you're debugging, you don't care about performance. You do when you take things to production. And it's enabled by a simple eager uh, debug mode flag.
So this is a slide just to quickly summarize um, uh, some of the work that is mature and has gone uh, to PyTorch XLA uh, in open source. Uh, of course, there are a lot of interesting things as work in progress, and we'll talk about them uh, when they become mature. That's all, and I'll take questions. Yes. So you mentioned the in integrate with torch distributor, you are having this torch dot. Sorry. Well, integrate with uh, tor uh, torch distributor, you have this torch dot XLA dot distributed uh, separate module. I guess. Uh, I'm wondering if you already tried some of our like the precise group. Ex uh, custom backend extension, uh, uh, yeah. We, we have done our own extensions in process group to support that, which I did not talk about, but I'm happy to connect with you after uh, this talk to kind of see what you all have done and how we can collaborate. Oh, sounds great. Yeah. 